Hey guys, Daniel Morad here, professional GT driver. And today I'm gonna to give you three steps to perfectly set up your seating position, steering position and pedal position to directly impact your lap time and comfort behind the simulator. The starting point for getting the perfect ergonomics on your sim rig is always with the, the base, the seat itself. That's where you're gonna be sitting for me personally, I race a Mercedes AMG GT3 and GT4 in real life. And I actually, <laughs> I measured my seat in my race car just because I was very curious to know what the angles were. And I actually found out that it's a 38 degree angle on the base and a 50, uh, 52 degree angle on the back portion. And I've actually, I've set the seat up in a way where it's matching within a degree of my exact uh, race car seating position. And for me, that's so important because I wanna be comfortable while I'm racing on the sim. Uh, and I wanted to emulate my real car as closely as possible. So it's always about getting the sim rig as close as possible to what's comfortable for you at the end of the day, because uh, that varies on personal preference. You can opt to use more of a prototype seating position where it will be a bit more tilted backwards or more of a GT style seating position, uh, like a road car GT seating position where it's tilted forward. Um, for, for GT3 or GT4 cars, typically the range is anywhere from uh, 32 degrees on the base um, to around 40. And then on the back, it's around, I would say uh, 45 degrees to around 55 degrees in that range. So um, definitely whatever feels more comfortable to you, you can go ahead and set your seat up like that. One of the most frequent areas where you may experience some pain would be in your lower back and your lumbar section. And uh, that's so important because when you're braking, which we'll touch on in a little bit, uh, there's a lot of pressure that's um, caused in your lower back because of you pressing against the pedal and it squeezing your back against the seat. If there is an air pocket or um, any space between your lower back and the back of the seat, usually that will cause a lot of extra strain and you don't want that. So typically what you would do is, um, you can see in my seat, I actually have a little uh, pad that I've added to, to reduce that gap on my lower back and that just uh, tends to support my lower back and lumbar a little bit more when I'm pushing the brake pedal hard. Once you get your seat position dialed in and you have the perfect angle for your personal preference, because remember, there's no right or wrong when it comes to seat angle. It's only a personal preference in terms of what you're looking for and what you want to achieve out of it. Uh, for me, I'm always looking to replicate my real race car. So I have my seat set up exactly like my car. Uh, next up, once you have your seat, make sure that your, your shoulders are pressed to the back of the seat and inside the, the shoulder rest because this is so important. If you start removing your, uh, your, your back off the chair, then you tend to lose balance on the car. So when, you, when you're turning, you, you tend to wobble back and forth, especially if you have a direct drive wheel, it, it, will, uh, it will move you around. So you wanna make sure you're secure. This way you have the, the most balance and the most secure grip on the wheel. Second thing is, I would say uh, wheel position, wheel distance to you, and uh, the angle of the wheel itself. So for me, uh, the height and the angle go uh, hand in hand. I've ha I have my wheel set up at around 14 degrees uh, on the steering shaft, and that's emulating my real AMG GT cars perfectly within a degree. Um, that's personally what I like, and I set up the height accordingly where uh, when I'm gripping the wheel, I'm not putting any additional um, strain on the top or bottom of my wrist. It's actually more or less going straight from my forearm through a straight wrist onto the grip of the wheel. Um, if, if you have the wheel height too high and it's too angled, you'll put additional stress on the uh, top of your wrist. And on the other side, if you're too low and you're driving down, down low, you'll actually put a lot of stress on the bottom of your wrist. So you wanna make sure ergonomically, uh, you're very straight and all your joints are lining up with the steering wheel. Um, in terms of distance to the wheel, you don't want it so far away where you're coming off the seat, but you also don't want it so close where you feel like you're, you're jammed up and you can't really make the steering inputs and your elbow is hitting the side bolster in the seat. So finding that perfect distance to where you're not uh, jammed up or you're not reaching is important. A great way for that to figure that out is to put your arms out while your shoulders are in the back of the seat, wrists on top of the wheel, and um, your wrist should be sitting right on the top of the wheel rim. That's more or less a really good guideline to getting the proper distance for the wheel. The final step to get the perfect ergonomics in your sim racing rig would be to get the pedals set up in the right spot. Uh, and this one can be quite tricky because um, you need 
step one and step two to be correct for step three to, to fall into place. And um, starting right away from your knees and we'll work down, you wanna make sure that the pedals are close enough where your knees are more or less, um, you don't wanna be quite at like a 90 degree angle, but you wanna make sure that when you're going to press the brake pedal, especially this is very important, you don't wanna have a straight leg. You wanna make sure you're maximizing your big muscles. So you're using your quad to press um, with the big pressure and you can reserve the rest of your strength in your leg from your calf and your ankle for the finesse pressure on the brake. That's gonna give you really good trail braking and that finesse at the last stage of braking when you're coming off and bouncing the car in a corner. Um, so again, no straight leg, avoid that. But you also don't wanna have your knees um, up into the steering wheel or like too bent because um, and it will start to generate some knee pain as you start to press the brake. So finding uh, an angle, I would say um, you wanna keep it around like 130 degree angle or so. Um, you know, you're not 180 degrees straight legging it, but uh, just allowing yourself to have a little bit of a bend so you can get that strength from your quad when you're pressing the brake. Um, the second thing is your ankle position. If you feel like uh, you're too um, closed off in terms of uh, where your, your ankle and your foot's positioned pushing against the pedal face, um, it's gonna cause some shin pain. So you're gonna get a lot of pain in the front uh, part of your, your shin. Um, just think about it. When, when you pull your, your toes back and your feet back, just statically, it hurts, right? It hurts in your shins. And on the other side, if you're reaching and you're trying to tippy toe it and, and push with your, the, the, the front of your toes, um, you're gonna get a lot of calf pain. So try to find that position where when you're squeezing, you're balancing that muscle front and back on your, on your lower leg. So uh, you're distributing the load across you know, all the muscles in your leg. You don't wanna just use one uh, muscle group or one muscle area. So that's, that's um, probably the best tip I can give you in terms of getting your, your ergonomics for your legs. Um, the throttle is just positioning the throttle in a way where you're not reaching all the time. I know in the real race car, sometimes uh, I've driven cars where I'm reaching a lot, and especially if you have to blip the throttle in a manual car or sequential gearbox, it can create some massive shin splints, which you, know, you really want to avoid, uh, and also calf spasms. So uh, that's typically frowned upon. But um, yeah, always start with, with uh, the knee bend, work down towards your ankle and make sure you get the pedal position. You can adjust the tilt of your pedals, either towards you or away from you. And um, and make sure that you're using big muscle groups for big pressure situations and reserve your smaller muscles and those quicker twitch fibers for finesse on the brake pedal so you can uh, hit the track, improve your lap times and have full control of your car. Another point that's super important is alignment of your hips and your knees going down towards the pedal. You can adjust the spacing between your pedals um, to, to basically align yourself straight towards the pedal. If you feel like your, your pedals are off towards an angle, which sometimes it happens in real race cars, if you have, especially with a three pedal setup, typically the brake will be in the middle. And if you left foot brake like myself, you're more or less off to one side. But with my setup, um, and especially in the real car, I, I more or less align myself where I'm trying to hit those brakes straight on, even if I have to shimmy my whole body over so I'm hitting the brakes straight rather than being uh, you know, straight and angling my knees across because that can generally generate uh, knee pain, especially if you have a misalignment. So you always wanna align your joints straight onto your controls, whether it's your steering wheel or your legs, you always wanna try to find the path of least resistance and line yourself up straight with your controls. Hopefully those three steps help you guys set up your ergonomics for your sim rig. I know this is a, a hugely talked about topic and um, hopefully that's shed a little bit more light in terms of the correct seating position versus uh, just everything you hear. I think coming from a professional GT driver and being able to relay my uh, real life experience, you know, fitting in multiple different cars, having seat fits every single year, I know exactly what it takes to get that perfect ergonomic position to be comfortable and also to feel the car and be balanced within the car as best as possible. So not only will it make you more comfortable, it's gonna make you faster because you're not focused on the aches and pains. Uh, you'll be focused on hitting your marks and, uh, and dropping your lap times on track.